Carrington and I have just had a brief but useful discussion about the vitality of the NATO alliance, and this endeavor is helping to improve NATO's conventional defense as we move forward in our negotiations on equitable stabilizing and verifiable reduction of nuclear weapons. Also, it'll have positive impact when we begin negotiations with the Warsaw Pact for more stable conventional forces from the Atlantic to the Urals. Congress support of co-development at an initial funding level of $200 million has opened up new opportunities of benefit to everyone. And as a result of the amendment by Senators Nunn and Roth and Warner, uh, there may this year be as many as a dozen cooperative ventures undertaken with Alliance nations. This is an historic first in the Alliance and will have a profound impact on NATO's conventional defense as well as a better return on both U.S. and European taxpayers' defense investment in all Alliance nations. Senators Nunn, Warner, and other members have been leaders in promoting this important legislation in the Congress. This partnership approach is the best antidote to trends toward defense protectionism on both sides of the Atlantic, as well as troop withdrawal amendments. The international political framework NATO has set up for stimulating progress in this partnership venture has been remarkable. The newly created reinforced North Atlantic Council meetings of deputy defense ministers includes the French and the first such use of the Council since 1950. And this is a very constructive way to encourage closer French cooperation on defense issues. And I'm grateful that Lord Carrington is taken personal leadership in this matter at NATO, and I deeply appreciate the wisdom and energy of all the parties who've made this work, many of whom are gathered here today. Lordship, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. President. May, may I just say Please do. one word? Um, I think that the Alliance <coughs> over the years has had a number of uh, successes, not least the 38 years. We haven't had the Third World War. I'm not at all sure that we can congratulate ourselves quite so warmly in the matter of arms cooperation over the last 38 years. Uh, we've had some successes, but it would be an exaggeration to say that we had been all that successful. And I am deeply encouraged that you, Mr. President, personally have uh, 
come to this meeting today uh, to give this a boost. And the fact that uh, Senator Nunn and Senator Roth and Senator Warner and others have made these proposals and have made it possible for there to be greater cooperation between the Europeans and the Americans is exceedingly important. And I know the energy with which uh, Secretary Weinberg and De Deputy Secretary Taft are carrying this out. We, alas, don't have all the resources that we need for defense. When we waste them by duplication and by competing against each other, we do the Alliance a great disservice. And so I can assure you that I will do everything I can to see that this is successful. And I, once again, am deeply grateful to you for having spoken in the way that you have. Well, thank you. And incidentally, while we have uh, given some uh, cast recognition here to the senators present, we fortunately have some members of our House of Representatives, too. Representative Hyde and others who are here at the table. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, Senator Dole says they're losing this highway vote. We'll make you a caretaker president. <laughs> I have asked for permission to go up on the hill and meet with uh, the members of the Senate up there to uh, discuss my caretaker status. What are you going to do? What? Yeah. <laughs> you think you can turn it around? What? You think you can turn it around? I never talk about win or lose before it happens. I'm going to just wait to see that. Okay. There we go. You don't look right. Here we go. said that Tennessee played the greatest defensive game I've ever seen. Pat, after 12 years of tremendous effort, your coaching and the heart and skill of these terrific young ladies gave you the victory that you so long deserved. Now, I've heard that you were up until 3 o'clock in the morning devising that defensive strategy to be representatives of that great volunteer educational and sports tradition. Your president, Ed Bowling is here, and Ed, I hope you'll take back my personal congratulations to remember all your years. And we'd be, the rest of our lives, thinking about whether we've done this or done that. I have a hunch that you'll remember. President Reagan, I knew if there was anyone in America that could appreciate that defense, it would be you. Thank you. <laughs> I think you also can appreciate, as we appreciate, just say no to drugs and the campaign that Nancy Reagan has done such a great job with. When we got up, I said the team was as anxious, as excited, and as nervous coming here to have this opportunity as they were playing for a national championship. <laughs> the honor is just as sweet as the victory. Thank you. We have your Converse weapons. <laughs> Now maybe you can play one-on-one -on -one for a day in our shoes. <laughs> and these also are for Nancy Reagan. Ms. Reagan, we thank you. <laughs> Next, we have a basketball from the 1987 Women's Basketball Championship team with our autographs on the basketball and coaches. We present that to you. T-shirt we'd like for you to have also. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm most grateful for all of these. Are ready to go. I have to, I can't help but take a little second and tell you something. I used to be a sports announcer. And back in the Midwest, back in the basketball was so great and so prominent that every year, at the state tournament, the girl here that maybe found your, didn't find your way down there. All right. Well, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
See what it did? 